Hello, my name is Mike Edler, and this video recording is a follow-up to the first recording uh, you should have seen by now is uh, getting started. This is a recording about Catalyst 9800 series uh, controllers, and uh, we call it 101 series, where we go to the basic configurations, some advanced configurations, and uh, and show you how to configure it in a D cloud. Uh, this presentation will uh, follow and match closely to the D cloud uh, deployment guide that by now you should have downloaded. And also uh, by now you should probably have already a session scheduled as you were instructed to do in getting started a recording and you have everything ready to start configuring the Catalyst controller. So as mentioned, it's going to be a, uh, a series of uh, recordings for different features, configurations on a Catalyst controller. Uh, we're going to have uh, in this uh, series a total of five scenarios and possibly add some additional in the future. But we're going to start now with uh, scenario one, which is a basic WLAN design and how to create WLAN, its basic security parameters, and how to connect the client to the WLAN. So it's just kind of very simple and fast configuration. So in this exercise, we're going to follow the steps as defined here to set up a basic WLAN. So we're going to start by defining a location. Then when we're going to create and apply WLAN to that location. We're going to map the created WLAN in the step uh, before to the VLANs that are already preset on the controller. Then we're gonna provision an AP that's also already connected to this controller to that WLAN. And then we're gonna define DHCP server for the wireless clients. We're gonna review this configuration. And finally, we're gonna test that connectivity with the wireless client in remote connection. So we're going to start this basic configuration by clicking on this icon and choosing this basic option here. Before we go into actual uh, demonstration, how to configure it in uh, live mode, actually on a controller in the cloud, a couple additional housekeeping uh, kind of details. First of all, um, the VLANs are already pre-configured on the controller in the cloud. So as you can see, there are SVIs that uh, define the switch virtual interfaces. And as you can see, there are three VLANs that are defined. And uh, each VLAN given name, one for employee, guest, and management. So when we create WLAN, we're going to have to map WLAN to one of these VLANs, or we can uh, map it to a group of, of uh, VLANs. In our case, we're going to map uh, the, the WLAN that we create to management VLAN 11. Also, we're going to set up a DHCP server. So just uh, kind of for your information, where we got the IP address, if you look at your dCloud network design, you'll see that there is uh, a... Uh, Active Directory server that we have and set up already in D Cloud. And when you click on the servers tab here, you'll see that this uh, server AD1 has an IP address of 198.18.133.1. So that's going to be our DHCP server for the clients. When they connect to the network, they will get IP addresses from this. Uh, DHCP server. Okay, let's connect now to the wireless controller in the dCloud. We already know that uh, this is the IP address, the public IP address of our controller. We enter username and password and we click on login. Once we log in into the controller, as you can see, we're running the Catalyst 9800-CL, meaning it's running on VM platform and it's release 17.3. On the left side, we present it with a menu. And as you can see, this is our dashboard presentations. Here we can see that we have uh, actually right now no WLAN configured, everything is zero, but we have one access point that's attached to the controller. 
as I mentioned in the getting started section of uh, video recordings, we have one AP connected from the remote side to this controller. And if we click on that AP, uh, you'll see that actually what I have here is a Catalyst 9100 series 9130AX AP connected in my remote site with this IP address. And right now it's running these uh, default site tags, policy tags, and RF tags. So really nothing is uh, configured on that AP. It's just running all defaults. Going back to the dashboard, one other uh, quick tidbit on uh, configuration. If you can see in release 17.3, we added this uh, guided assistance tab. So if you're doing it for the first time, if you click on this guided assistant tab, you'll see different options that show you how, for example, configure uh, AAA. Or if you click, uh, you'll see that you can uh, configure 802.1x authentication, and it's it gives you instructions step by step. A local web authentication against instructions step by step. So that's uh, kind of a nice addition in 17.3 release. We're not going to follow these steps. We will follow steps as they are depicted in the uh, cloud deployment guide, and we're going to just follow step by step and configure all the parameters as you instructed to do so in the deployment guide for the dCloud wireless configuration uh, that by now you should have already downloaded. So before uh, we actually go to start configuring uh, basic WLAN, uh, one other piece of information that I would like to show you is actually the VLAN that uh, I mentioned before that already created. So if we go to configuration VLAN, as you can see, we have these SVI already pre-configured, as I mentioned, and these VLANs are uh, already have names, employee guest management, and as I mentioned, we're going to map the newly created WLAN to this management VLAN as it's uh, instructed in the deployment guide. So let's go back to the dashboard, and we're going to start with creating our basic WLAN configuration. So again, we're starting with this icon on the top. If we click, we have these options presented, and we choose a basic configuration. Once basic configuration is clicked, we, cl we click on plus add. We will be pre presented here with uh, these different tabs to configure. WLAN general wireless network AP provisioning. So let's start with general and first enter the location name. We'll call it pod one location as indicated in the guide. And the same here for description, we're going to enter pod one location. And we're going to leave the location type as local and client density as typical. Next, we're going to click on the Wireless Network tab. And here we also click on Add. And here we're going to go and define a new WLAN. So we click on Define New and Profile Name. So we're going to create profile name. We'll call it pod1-admin. And uh, SSID will be the same, pod1-admin. Okay, again, we're following the deployment guide. That's what they're telling us to do. We enable this WLAN, okay, and we make sure that broadcast SID is also enabled. Next, we click on the security tab. And here we're going to choose WPA2, WPA3 for layer 2 security. And we scroll down, make sure the WPA3 policy is disabled. We leave the encryption as AES uh, CCMP128. Make sure uncheck 802.1x. We're going to use uh, PSK for authentication key management. So we click on PSK and keep scrolling down. And over here, we're going to enter the PSK key. So we're going to call it Cisco, Cisco, just as it is instructed in the deployment guide. 
Now that we enter that, we click on Apply to Device. And we get this uh, pop-up here that configuration successfully applied. So now we have this WLAN Pod 1 admin uh, SSID created. Now we have to define and map how we're going to map uh, to which VLAN we're going to map the just newly created w, uh, WLAN. So as we said in the previous uh, slide that we're going to map it to the management VLAN. Okay. We, we're not going to create here any ACLs or QoSs. We just make sure that uh, this WLAN has central switching, central DHCP, and central authentication and association. Again, we still going to have to go in the next step and define this DHCP server. For now, we just click here on Add. And as you can see, we have created this Pod1 admin wireless network. The next step would be to actually map this Pod1 admin that we created to the AP. So we go next to this tab called AP Provisioning. And as you can see, we showing here this uh, MAC address of the AP that I have set up in my remote side. Um, and that's, as you know, it happened to be my uh, Catalyst 9130AX AP. I click on that AP and I click on this uh, error icon. Make sure that this AP is going to be provisioned. As you can see, AP with this MAC address is now provisioned to this location that we creating. After we have this provision and we see the stat status in jo is joined, we click on apply here. And after we see this configuration successfully applied pop up, we can see that we have a pod one location created. For now, it's still showing uh, that there's joint AP0, but after a while, it's going to refresh and show that there is uh, AP is connected to this pod one location. In the next step, we're going to go and create uh, and set up DHCP server for our wireless clients, and we're going to connect wireless clients. Okay, you see now that uh, after a second, uh, uh, the dashboard refreshed itself, and now we're showing that uh, there's a one joint AP. So as we said earlier, let's go now and configure DHCP server for our uh, wireless clients. So we go to configuration, and we go to this uh, tags and profiles tab, and here we choose a policy. As you can see, the pod one location WLAN ID policy is automatically created uh, during the uh, basic configuration. So we click on this policy and we go to advanced tab here on top. Click on advanced tab and as you can see there is a section where we configure the DHCP server for the clients. So we'll click on IPv4 DHCP server is required and as you recall from the beginning of this presentation, we said that we have a DHCP server running on Active Directory server, and its IP address is 198.18.133.1. Okay, so this is basically all we need to do on this uh, tab, advanced tab. We just update and apply to the device. So configuration successfully saved and now we have a DHCP server with DHCP pool available for our wireless client. All we have to do is now uh, connect our wireless clients and uh, to this WLAN we just created and see how they operate. Okay, uh, we're switching for a moment to our uh, Mac laptop client device in the remote site and as you can see, we have here a Wi-Fi enabled, and we have uh, here is the Pod One admin that we configured is being advertised, and it's presenting us with a password. So as you know, we created WLAN a Pod One admin with password Cisco Cisco. So we type in Cisco Cisco, 
Let's show it to make sure that it's correct. And we join this network. Okay, as you can see, we now joined uh, pod one admin. And if we open network preferences, we can see that we connected and we received an IP address from uh, our management VLAN, which is 198.19.11.12. Okay, we're switching back to our controller dashboard. And as you can see, uh, now we're showing here, we have two active clients. So actually connected two laptops to in my remote site to the WLAN pod one admin. So if we click on this, uh, you can see that we have two active clients. They both connected to this, uh, SID pod one admin. And if we click again, we get additional information about this uh, client. As you can see, you can you can get all kind of statistics about this client connected to the uh, WLAN. Uh, if you click on general, again, a lot more information available about uh, client uh, connectivity. So as you can see, uh, both clients, they received uh, the IP address from the management DHCP pool. So again, if we go back quickly and look at VLAN, you can see that our management pool is uh, VLAN 11, 198, 19, 11, 10. So that's where our uh, clients are receiving this uh, uh, IP addresses. That's basically it. That uh, is uh, our basic WLAN configuration. and um, as you can see, we have two clients connected. We have, if we go back to the basic setup, we created this location, pod one location that shows now that we have one joint AP and two clients. And that's uh, the end of uh, WLAN basic configuration in the D cloud.